Miss Kimberly Leocono, and they are <laughs> mental therapists. And that is something, because they probably get with people who drive them crazy oh, all God. day. <laughs> so that means you need to really have some outlets so mm -hmm. you don't take on those spirits yeah, yourself. Absolutely. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. So the first thing, ladies, I want to know what cause you to go into this field because I know there is a lot of need for it. A lot of people start out in it and they really transition over to other things right. because yes. it becomes very overwhelming. Yeah, yeah. yeah it becomes overwhelming. Yeah. So whichever one of y'all want to chime in and tell me y'all great backs behind the scenes story. I mean, I think this, this field chose me. Okay. I can be honest. Um, I, I didn't choose it. I don't I don't think anybody with sense would choose a field where they <laughs> just want to go and sit down and hear somebody's problems all day. Mm -hmm. um, I can say honestly for me, it chose me. Even in the seventh grade, I always said I would be a psychologist and not, not even knowing what I was saying. And so, and, and, and even though life took me in many different directions, I always ended up back here mm -hmm. in the mental health field. And so, it chose me. And um, I know it's my gift. I know it's my purpose. You know, I may not necessarily be in an office all the time with clients, mm -hmm. but my job is so much bigger than just being at a at a in a room with a person one on one. I have other bigger things that I have to do to help the community and the world with mental health. So right. I know that. For well, that. one thing, Kiva, I I do know that um you actually minister to people. You are. Are you are a licensed minister? I am licensed. Not, not a licensed minister yet. Not yet. See, I I'm, speak, a, um, I'm speaking in for you. Not I'm an ordained prophetess, but I don't tell people that. I, I, I am a licensed therapist, but I, I, um, I work with the youth. I do. I'm a youth minister. And so um, I, I do work in the church a lot in the mental health and the um, Christian field, related field. Uh, and, I, and I wanted to say that because I think... Well, we missed that out because we're here on Gospel Station. Right. And I want people to know that within the church, there are a lot of things. Because we are a hospital in the church. A lot of people come there sick. So we need to be have people there to help people at different levels with their different needs. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. and, and I love the fact that you go to and you're there with the youth. Because like you said, you are a prophet. So that means you can be, discern some of those things that are going on with our kids. Right. Because you don't want it to be to the point that they reach that adult level. Right. And that is where... And that's what yeah, yeah. That's exactly what happened. We've taken those things from from you know a childhood or a teenage mm -hmm. into our adult, adult life, life, and we mm -hmm. haven't learned how to process them. And now we're dealing with the ramifications of that. Exactly. Absolutely. And I totally believe that in the church we have to do a better job of understanding mm -hmm. mental health as well as spiritual. We mm -hmm. have to know the both sides of that because we can do so much harm otherwise if we don't understand what we're looking right. at. You know, we want to go and deliver people. Lay hands and deliver people, but when you don't understand mental health, sometimes you have to have some medication. Yeah, and, I, and I'm always going <laughs> to say that because you take us back to our scripture that we went from Mark 5 1 through 20. When you talk about that, um, Jesus, yeah, he laid hands, but yeah. he spoke to the demons. Right. He spoke to the lesions of demons, wow. the multiple things that were going on in this man. So we have to be able to identify there might be multiple things going on. Absolutely. And right. a lot of yeah. times we like to name it something and label it something just so we can, mm -hmm. you know, put a label on them. Mm -hmm. We can get our money from the insurance company and then we can send them on their way with a little drug. Well, mm -hmm. we do need a label. Don't get me wrong. You have to know what it is. Yeah, you got to call, call it, it but you got to... You know, but you need to know... All understand. of them. Yeah. The root of the issue. Exactly. The yeah. root of the issue. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right. Come on. <laughs> okay. Your no question. Um, how, did I, how did I choose this field? Um, I've always had a love for... Um, people, one, and I feel like everybody has a story. Mm -hmm. And uh, one thing, it is, it's a big stigma in society, and especially in the black community. And um, I wanted to give a voice to the voiceless mm -hmm. and just let people know, like, it's okay. Like, we've been talking about, you don't have to be schizophrenic or hear voices. It could be depression, and you just need somebody to talk to. A lot of times, people are afraid to talk to their loved ones for fear of judgment and things like that. So I wanted to get into this field to give people, to empower people to be able to, um, you know, and like you were saying, keep be able to process things from the past and be brave enough because a lot of times we go through things as adults and we don't understand why am I always angry mm -hmm. or why am I always sad or down or depressed. And it could be something that happened decades ago that you just never were able to process. So, um I, uh, what I say this field chose me, um, 
probably a little bit of both. It, it chose me and I chose it because I do definitely feel like I want to do more, market more, advocate more for this population because it it, it definitely um, needs it's some light shine yeah. on it. Mm -hmm. I, I think the thing is, it's a stigma. It is. It's it a is. stigma because if I claim a label, mm. people put me in a little box mm -hmm. and then that nobody wants to come to the little box and be around me. Mm -hmm. It's like, I don't, I don't want to claim crazy uncle so-and-so. Right, right. Or we don't want crazy uncle so-and-so to come around. Mm -hmm. And I'm just using uncle, so if, uh, the, you know, I'm not saying it's your uncle or anything, but people, you know how they pick. <laughs> but the, the whole concept everybody is... Everybody has somebody. Every, yeah. yeah. And the thing is, if, yeah. if we really think about it, all of us have a breaking point. Absolutely. Yeah, we all of us need to know where our breaking point is. All of us need to really sit down and assess our lives to make sure that we aren't on that borderline mm. ourselves. Wow. I, I mean, we, we got, I got to figure out if we're breaking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because um, the most recent case that hit the news yesterday was a tw the 29-year-old in Tennessee yes. who actually was trying to kill all five of her kids right. and kill four of them. Right. Um, we yeah, don't consider um, postpartum depression oh, oh, yeah, as strange. a mental illness. Right. People don't check these parents out before they let these people leave the hospital with these kids. You had them, we give them to you. Right. But that does not mean you're mentally stable to go home with them. Right, so right. now you've lost life because nobody thought that postpartum was a real right, depression right. or a real issue. issue. Mm -hmm. You know, that's something. You go home, you get over it. You had these kids. Okay, that's great. But then there are lives involved mm -hmm. in that. I saw that yesterday from Memphis where it occurred mm -hmm. and um and then I looked at the ages of the children you know they were stair oh, steps the, yes. yeah all under five years mm -hmm. old and so I'm like can you imagine the stress yeah but can you imagine her life yeah. yeah and the thing is she wasn't really crazy right and if she would have got help she would've somebody just okay. needed to recognize mm -hmm. that something was going right. on and that's where it goes back to even the spouse we need to be mm -hmm. able to tune in Tune uh -huh. in. And what me and my spouse always say is we need to have a, um, we call it a hug moment in the morning. Uh -huh. <laughs> when we call our 15-minute um, checkup. Oh, wow, okay. You uh -huh. know, it's, the, it's, it's that 15-minute checkup. He say, are you going crazy today? Uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't really say it like that, but you know what? That's what it is. It's like I'm hugging you to see if you all you're right. Okay, right. Oh, you know okay, how your day going right. to be. Did uh -huh. you sleep all right? If you didn't sleep all right, get back on the other side of bed, take a little nap, get right, you, right, you got right. two back together, you know. So who? down enough to do a 15 minute check right you know what i'm saying think about that you know if you have four or five kids or whatever one or two kids you know your life our lives are so busy now we wake up running mm -hmm. but why mm. but well, why that, now that's yeah. a whole nother but why? Yeah, yeah, yeah. but why yeah okay because i can remember a time that i had eight kids in the house at one time and before y'all get crazy i didn't birth all eight of them but i had eight kids in the house Me at too. one time yeah. mm -hmm. and I made the time to make sure I checked in with that all eight of them because mm -hmm. they had they were on different schedules. Mm -hmm. Even when I was on the road traveling, you know, my hotel time, I still work with them on their homework mm -hmm. and everything. So it's an excuse that we use as busy, mm -hmm. no matter what age the kids are, especially as a husband and wife. We have to prioritize the health of each other. I got to check in with you. Right. Mm -hmm. I got to check in. We, we use that as an excuse in society. I got too busy to call you. I got too busy to come by. Mm -hmm. And the first thing we say is when something happens to that person is, man, why ain't call me and tell right, me? Right, right, right. right. Mm -hmm. Well, you're right. I mean, I, I agree with you completely. I, um, and again, if you have someone in your life that can do that for you, I, I think I had maybe eight children in my house at one time, and I had to recruit some help because I knew I couldn't do it alone. Me and my husband, we work different shifts. You mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. so I had to bring in someone into the home mm -hmm. to help me maintain the sanity in mine and mm -hmm. the kids. You know yeah, what I'm right. saying? So so it wouldn't get overwhelming or yeah. out of control for me. So, you know, you mm -hmm. being afraid to ask for help. Yeah. That's being afraid thing. to ask for yeah. help. Because yeah. there's and, a stigma behind that. Yeah. Yeah. And I was going to say, and sometimes even if you don't have that person or that husband that you can call and ask for help, that's another good time to reach out to somebody in the community, like a mental health therapist or somebody, because usually most times as social workers, we know a lot of resources and things that'll be able to help you out or programs and things like mm -hmm. that. And you can, you know, check in 
with us, you know, if you don't I'm have gonna, that. I'm, I'm going to say this for any ministries that are here with us, that are listening. Mm -hmm. You all need to find within your community Please. of your church yes. or reach out to these two ladies and make sure that you're using right. the resources to to check on people. Mm -hmm. that, that That's very important. Because yeah, we have to be the village again. We're not, you know, we... We go to work, we go home, we go in our garages, as I say, and you don't know your neighbors. You right. don't know, you oh, know, yeah. some people, everybody doesn't go to a church. Everybody doesn't That's go to right. a religious work. They stay in their little space yeah. and they don't know, or maybe they don't reach out to find the resources available to them. So we have to be a village. Yeah. yeah. Right. You know, when I, when I say church, this is my definition of church, me. Oh, absolutely. Going back yes, to the, the original, body. the original church. Because I can't think of the edifice, the four walls as the church. Because the thing is, it's a lot of functions that go on within the four walls that don't reach outside. Mm. So each of us have the responsibility to act as the church wherever we are. Right. And if we do that effectively, that is how we really right. help each other. How we make it. Right. And, and that's why I say this this hour here is supposed to be to help people wherever they are in their relationship. Mm -hmm. So it's the church. Um, I know I played a song one week. It was about my church is in the car. Mm -hmm. So that means if you riding with your wind down and you listening to us, your church is in the car. We 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 talking to you. We talking to you. Mm -hmm. So whether mm -hmm. you in the office, you working, and you dialed on, we talking to you. Right. So that that is we trying to talk to everybody, no matter where they are. Right. Mm -hmm. So let's jump to the um, second question, and it's really what are some of the things that you see as triggers or signs that people kind of. You know, turn away from, you know, they, they red lights. Right. They red lights. And I know it's something that's not quite right with mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. But I was like, man, I turn a blind eye to that. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I um, I would even go as far as to making um domestic violence mm -hmm. is actually huge. It's, um, mm -hmm. I would consider mm -hmm. that to be a mental illness. And the only reason I consider that because most of the time it's something that's genetically passed along from within the environment that you came from. And you've mm -hmm. adjusted to that being acceptable. Mm -hmm. And the problem is, in society, the first thing we just do is say, that's very unacceptable behavior. But besides just saying it's unacceptable, why? Teach me something different. Learn and reconstruct me different. That's kind of like, okay, when they identify, besides just going to anger management, they need a little bit more. Mm -hmm. because, right. it, because domestic violence, to me, is a little bit more than just saying, I need to sit down, take a deep breath and understand and listen. Mm -hmm. Because to that point, you have more rage. You have actually a culture that you have been through mm -hmm. that you need. And so I've been in that entity where I've seen people in that. And that is not a place that you can just be like, well, honey, let's talk about the um, demons that are right. messing with right, you. Right. Let's talk about what's bothering you. Mm -hmm. what's the because by then... Because most victims don't think they're victims, first of all. Yeah, right, you know what right, I'm saying? Right. Like, if you ask a domestic violence person, are you in an abusive relationship, they'll say no. Yeah, because they act like, well, I triggered, I did something wrong. I well, most of them just don't believe, yeah, they don't believe, they, this is normal for them. This is my normal, mm -hmm. and they believe everybody else lives like this as well. Right. Yeah, and like I said, see, or now the, something they did the, 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 sign, yeah. the, the mm -hmm. signs, okay, so what are some of the signs mm -hmm. that you all see that can help some people out? So, not necessarily so they run away from people, but that, so they can help people. Or maybe ask, like, what's going on? Yeah, so you. so you can help. So you can identify when somebody's in depression. Mm -hmm. You can identify when somebody's going through that postpartum, you right, know. Right, So right. we don't have a lot of people's kids, you know. When you need to go over to the house and say, hey, let me come get two of these exactly, babies. Exactly, exactly. Right, you know, right, when those right. signs. Or so, a meal or something. Or, or so the spouse knows, okay, I need to let these are the things that we need to be able to identify. Right, right. So tell me um, if I came in and told you, okay, my husband is a little crazy. You know y'all know he a little crazy, but he crazy in a good way. That man always had me laughing. Not crazy like mental. <laughs> um, some of the signs that I would say for like depression or maybe suicidal would be like, um, is the person all of a sudden isolating themselves from other people? Mm -hmm. Are they, um, you witness them having crying spells, a lot of tearfulness. They may um, have lost interest in things they once used to like to do. So say they used to always go bowling every Saturday. Now all of a sudden they don't go anymore. Mm -hmm. um, those are some of the things. Maybe their eating habits may change. Maybe some of their habits, like if they go to the gym all the time, now they're not going. They used to eat three meals a day, and now they're eating one or barely eating. Those are some of the things to um, that comes to my mind. Or and also like sleeping, that's a big thing too. Mm -hmm. Your sleep pattern maybe um, have changed. Things like that are things to look for. 
Absolutely, I agree. Uh, maybe missing work. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. a lot of work because sometimes people only know people at work. Right, right. But if you know, it's like, oh, Mary hasn't been here. You know, she keep every day, every week. She's taking a day or two. You know, yeah. you may want to yeah. um, say something. I know we feel like you know, oh, it's none of my business. I don't know this person, right, but right. But just having that ear. Sometimes people just need that's one it. person to that's speak all, up. Um, I agree with the sleeping. Definitely, um, maybe sleeping too much or not sleeping. Mm-hmm. Maybe having too much energy. Uh, could be a sign of drug abuse. It could be a sign of mm-hmm. a lot of things. So, um, just paying attention. I think we just have to pay more attention to exactly. people. You know, we just we're. I, I know you said it's an excuse, but we're such in a, such a rush moving that we're, we're overlooking well, everybody. It, it's it's not an excuse because that's the way people live. People have chose to live mm-hmm. fast and blinded. Um, because we do, we, we put by, blind, vision, yeah. we blind folders on. Right. Because I, I can remember teaching my kids how to drive, and the first thing I do is say, focus, focus. Don't pay attention to people honking behind mm-hmm. you. Don't pay attention to everybody beside you. But the problem is you have to have the ability mm-hmm. to see what's going around you to be able to drive effectively. Right. Because if somebody coming behind you or acting erratic, and that's the same thing in our relationship mm-hmm. journeys, we need to find out that people are losing their mind around us. Yeah, exactly. Right. Because actually, when you go to driving school, the first thing they tell you is you need to look up, be able to look a certain distance ahead of you mm-hmm. to judge what's going on, to know how fast you need to be going and to keep the distance. We don't do that when we drive. We all up on people. Right. And that's the thing. We distracted. Yeah, we distracted. Right. We busy. We going fast. And mm-hmm. that's how we are in our relationships. That's right. Whether it's your personal relationships with your coworkers, mm-hmm. you don't pay that sense of an observance like right, you need to. Right. And then you wonder why people is say something to them that that's actually true, made some right, sense. Right, right. Yeah, but you the first one get shot because you were sitting next to them and you couldn't even no, say a kind That's right, that's right. And yeah. you couldn't say a kind word right. to them. Mm-hmm. And I mean, we call that postal central. But the thing is, that's a, nobody actually has a conversation. Sometimes all people need is somebody to have that's a listening it. ear. That's mm-hmm. it. Most Sit times. back, that's, yeah. prop your feet up in a chair, and allow yourself yeah, to close times. your mouth. That's what I'm going to say. And be yeah. a good listening ear. Just not have an opinion. Right. Just not give your, your suggestions. Right. Just listen. Mm-hmm. That, but that's very hard to do because we listen to respect. We don't listen to hear, right? That's so right. we listen to respond. We always thinking about what we're gonna say. So we don't even we're not even listening. Mm-hmm. So it's so true. Um again, that's why we use what you say, discernment. You know, if you get that little inch or that little nudge to say something to someone, a stranger or something, do it. You know, mm-hmm. you you never know how you may impact someone's life and vice versa. And so, you know, it it may seem strange. It's a little, you know, weird. I don't know this person, but mm-hmm. just a hello, just a smile, just an acknowledgement. You, you'll be amazed how many people don't get a hug. Right. You know, right. and so it's, mm-hmm. it's important. It's very important. Yeah. And, I'm okay. and I, I would just want to add to that, like mental health, people don't realize it's just as important, if not more important than your physical health. Absolutely. It, because, I mean, for instance, if somebody breaks their leg, you're not going to say, oh, I'll go see about it in a week or a month or so. It's the same thing with our mental health. If you're feeling depressed, down, you notice it. We, can, we notice a difference in ourselves. Mm-hmm. Like, if I'm feeling down, I'm like, dang, Kim, you you haven't been do I need to get a baby to somebody and go out to eat? What do I need to do? And most of us don't do that. We ignore right. it. And then it gets to that breaking point where we end up, you know, maybe in the hospital or maybe like the 29-year-old the in Memphis, you know, if she would have just had that break or somebody to talk to or if she would have paid attention to the first sign that she felt something was off, things probably would have ended up different. So I just want to encourage everybody out there, if you see your partner or your spouse, something seems different, you know, just offer, you know, offer a listening ear. Uh, offer, and that's it. Don't give any, don't, don't, a lot of people don't want to hear your input at mm-hmm. that moment, maybe later on down the line, but just listen, and that's it, and give them, you know, give them a hug or what they need, um, so I just wanted to add that. One of the keys, and I, if y'all notice what I said, one of the keys, because most things, people think it's only one key to a relationship, but one of the keys is great communication, oh, and yeah. the part of that great communication is listening. I always say listening is love. If you don't have the ability to listen, that means you don't truly love me. Mm. Because the problem is, all you want to do is hear yourself. Mm. That means you love your voice, you love your opinion, (laughs) you love that. But if it's about just letting me get the noise out. Because sometimes once we speak, the noise is outside of our body. And we're releasing that spirit or we're releasing that energy. And then we're getting rid of it. 
Mm-hmm. Because the thing is, going back to our scripture, if the man had not called out for Jesus, mm-hmm. he would not have gotten help. And the thing is, if he hadn't been there to listen to what was really going on, because he asked him what his story was. Right. He asked him what's going on with right. it. And the thing is, if you notice, no place else in the scripture did anybody yeah, yeah. ask him what was going on. Mm-hmm. They put him in chains. Mm-hmm. They locked him up. So that's the place that we have to pull ourselves away from mm-hmm. is the first thing is putting people in boxes, locking them up. Mm-hmm. So if we can move ourselves to a place mm-hmm. where we can't, we don't have to judge people because they don't do things that's the way it. that we do, that's put it. these stigmas that's on right people, that's and judgment. then us as individuals, we need to say, hey, hey. I'm about to break down. Yes. I need some help. I need a break. Yeah. Yep. Give me 50 feet. That's you know, right. You right. Know. I, I can, Give me I can, some air. Um, I can remember when I used to come home off the road, I had a rule. And um, actually, my, my kids probably, even this day, even though all of them grown except my last little baby, and I call her baby, she grown too mm-hmm. at home. But I had a 30-minute rule. Mm-hmm. I had a 30-minute rule when I walked in the door. So that means... You don't need to ask me a question. That's right. You don't need to. I need to um, mm-hmm. wash work off. Unwind. Well, yes. no, my wife, hot as the water, so it was washing work off. I love it. And then what it says, the pressures of the day because the heat, whatever, the swelling or whatever mm-hmm. was going on. Think about nothing except the water flowing mm-hmm. over me. Mm-hmm. Right. And that's actually my most creative place. I tell my husband, when I want to think of something, I get in the shower. That's mm-hmm. amazing. I go in the bathroom to here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah need to find out what, what is your it? therapeutic mm-hmm. place. That's right. Do you need the 30 minutes in the mm-hmm. shower? And, you know, when I used to get home, um, I also, one of my things was, I was sitting 30 minutes didn't right. start till I walked in the house. You know, so I was right. going to steal a little extra time. But mm-hmm. the thing is, yes. you need to find out so finding those little things mm-hmm. that work for That's you. Right. It doesn't have to be a lot. It doesn't have to be expensive. Yes, Look, everybody thinks it's a spa Yeah, you know, oh, I can't yeah, afford yeah. to get my nails done. I can't afford to pamper. Just the little things mm-hmm. that you need to get your mind re- right. rejuvenated. It's just like your phone. You have to recharge your phone. You have to reset your phone. You That's have to right. reset your brain. You have to reset your mind mm-hmm. every day. Every day. we think we can go months and years without resetting. No, you need to do that every day. Yep. Take you some moment. Even if you need to wake up 15, 20 minutes before the house wakes up. Get right. you some quiet time. Get mm-hmm. you some meditation time with your spirit. Get some meditation time with the Lord. You know, and... and in the more you do it, the better it's going to work. But, I mean, at least 10 to 15 minutes of just quiet. I think uh, that's another issue is that we don't have quiet anymore. Yes, right. Well, you know Everybody what? is uh, so much noise going yeah. on, so much activity going on. you with your phone, you with your computer. Yeah, so right. you, you, know, you know, people mm-hmm. running around talking to your husband, your children, whatever, whoever. And so if you don't get that quiet time, you can't regroup, you can't refocus yeah. and, and get back to you. Mm-hmm. It's so important. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And eventually it's going to take a toll on your mental health and physical health. Right. And yeah. um, any women that's on the phone, and they always proclaim it, I want to be the Proverbs 31 oh, woman. Goodness. That's what I always hear when I say, say, I, I want to be the Proverbs yeah, 31 first woman. But the thing is, she got up before everybody else did. And what she did, she found her peace before she got to doing anything Absolutely. else. Mm-hmm. She found her peace and her balance, and she allowed God to order her steps for that day. So if you want to be that woman... You need to find your level of peace. You need to find your place of taking on more that you can bear. That's right. That's it. You take it on more than you can and bear. And that's, that's it. I think a lot of times we think we're doing God's work. You know, mm-hmm. we're so busy. Like, oh, I have to ask you to take his job from him. Wow. And sometimes we're overstepping our boundaries. Mm-hmm. And we're doing more than he requires of us. And like you said, you know, he doesn't out. He got some things he needs to work out with them. And you in a, you interfering with it. Exactly. So, absolutely. So, mm-hmm. that's so so important to ask God to order your steps daily. Mm-hmm. I agree. Mm-hmm. I, I just it's just the little things that add up. That's you know right. that that add up to to the big thing. It doesn't always it doesn't always have to be a trauma or right. something drastic that mm-hmm. happens. You know, it's just little things that over time, over time mm-hmm. that add up and then it's a breaking point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We got a breaking point. We got a place where we feel like we're being pressured or we're mm-hmm. closed in. How and, did I get here? You know, yeah. we say, how did I get here? And, right. and it's funny it's funny <laughs> that you say that. It's funny that you say that um um because I'm actually doing a periscope this Wednesday um about how did you get here? Wow. So, mm-hmm. I mean, if y'all periscoping. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah, yeah. because I, I do that on Wednesday, periscope, but it's about how did you get here? Because we become strangers to ourselves, more or less we become wow. strangers to other yeah. people. Yeah. So, yeah. 
But I want you all to know we do have a song coming up because it is music on the radio. <laughs> and, mm. woo, and that's something we needed to do in this world. Remind me who I am because I get so labeled by other people. Yes. But remind me first I'm a child of God. Absolutely. Besides all them other labels. What they say, if the, you don't know who you are, the world will tell you who That's you are, right. right. And I don't want the world to tell me who I am. So I need to be reminded who I am every day so I don't get caught up in the labels that mm-hmm. other people give me. Oh, yeah. right. So we're going to jump into that song, and then we're going to just open up the lines and for everybody that just wants to ask questions, and that is at 770-415-2149. Let's move into Remind Me Who I Am. <laughs> 